make known his deeds among the people.
come from the blood. If any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing done through strife or great glory, but in holiness of mind. Let each esteem other better than himself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, though not found it not robbing to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of his servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I've read Philippians 2, verses 1 through 11. May God have a blessing and a reading to his word. Amen. Amen.
torrential downfalls, storms. And the Bible tells us that trials and tribulations will come our way. And therefore, we need to be very intimate with the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Amen. We need a personal and intimate relationship yes. with him. We must believe that the Lord will help us through every trial and tribulation. Uh -huh. In addition to that, we need to be considerate of the people who love us. Uh -huh. It is good when we appreciate the time we spend with them. As we go through this journey that is called life, we realize there will always be something to disturb our peace. Yeah. And church, please know that it is to our advantage to keep them in the midst of our everyday living. We are the ones who benefit from him being in the midst of everything we say and do. Come on, Currently, there is a pandemic yeah. that is affecting the whole world. In March of 2020, the COVID-19 outburst was the cause of a national emergency uh -huh. in the place that we call home. Yeah. The people in the United States as well as other countries around the world are currently dealing with this pandemic. Spiritually speaking, I know that storms comes in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. There may be big ones as well as medium sized and or small ones. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, a storm is a storm. Yeah. A trial is a trial. Uh -huh. A tribulation is a tribulation. Yeah. The pain from each one has its effect on the person who has to deal with what that brings. There may be some financial storms, yeah. some storms of sickness, mm -hmm. storms of grief and heartache, mm -hmm. loneliness, low self-esteem. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are currently experiencing some storms of racism. Yeah. Hatred is tearing the country apart. We see storms of leadership. We see storms of political divide. Uh -huh. We see storms of police brutality yeah. sweeping through this country and other parts of the world, storm after storm. But no matter what life brings our way, we can find comfort in knowing that there is a silver lining. Yeah. That silver lining is our majestic God whom voice is like the roaring thunder. Mm -hmm. and after every storm, there's a calm that's undescribable. And after the disturbing past, peace comes. Yes, Amen. Rising sun, your theme is a determined church. Yeah. In spite of all the tests you face, this great church keep on moving forward. Its pastor and first lady, the officers and members are determined to continue doing the job they were called to do. Amen. From what I have been shown, Rising Sun is strong in its belief. Uh -huh. You are going to keep on doing whatever it is that God requires of you. Yeah. Why is it that? Your faith in the Lord is unwavering. Yes. Your desire to be obedient is uncompromising. On, Life has shown me that whenever someone is determined, they do not give up easily. Yes. They keep on hanging in there. Yes. They stick with it until the job is done. Yes. They might have to cry along the way. Because no matter how hard or how difficult things become, their minds are set on keep on moving forward. They just demonstrated by trusting God 
to save and guide them every day. This is because they note how God fulfilled his promises in the past. Therefore, they develop strong confidence that he will continue to look after them. We know that whenever the Israelites obeyed the plan God set before them, they were successful. Uh -huh. We also know that whenever they allowed their thoughts and desires to take over them, they were not successful. In the book of Joshua, the people had a choice, just like us in the year 2020. While living in a pandemic, we have a choice. In areas throughout America, black people are faced with their lives being minimized, uh -huh. social injustice, low income, uh -huh. as well as poor housing. Nevertheless, uh -huh. as a follower of Christ, we have to decide how are we going to act. We have to decide whether we will worship and obey the Lord alone. In spite of all the things working against my black face, I have to make a choice. Oh, yeah. I'm going to continue to worship my Savior and to obey his commandments. Amen. For the Israelites, it became down to whether they would become a holy nation, a nation that would have an influence on the people around them. In other words, the rest of the world. While in this pandemic, as born again believers, we have to decide which way we will take. Yeah. How are you affecting the world? What are you going to do? In Joshua chapter 24, verses 2 through 13, Joshua reminded the people that God was good. Remind them of God's promises and provisions. He reminded them of how they had received the blessings in the past. Rise and sun, knowing your pastor as well as I do, he is taking good care of the scripture. Therefore, I'm not going to go any deeper into Joshua chapter verses 24. 14 through 24. Uh, but our lesson for this morning, I would like to use Psalm 29. Let us remember that David was someone who was very familiar with the outdoors. He was familiar with the outdoors and its elements. However, when this particular storm came, he was not on the outside, uh -huh. but rather he was in Jerusalem, uh -huh. which was a city that was beautifully situated. Here King David was in the seat of palace that was built on Mount Zion. I read that the king could look over the landscape from his palace. He could view the whole land. There was the Mediterranean Sea, the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, and the Dead Sea. There were the famous mountains and the wilderness that we read about in the Bible. Psalm 29 is a song of Hebrew poetry, and it is describing a storm. It is also a hymn of praise for the king of creation. In this psalm, praise is given recognizing his majestic power. The powerful voice of the Lord is upon the water and it is compared to thunderbolts of rainstorm. I read that thunder surpasses all other sounds. At the beginning of this song requires his heavenly being to subscribe to the Lord. This is a summons to worship the Lord. It is a call to praise in the temple. 
in stanzas three through nine, David talked about the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. It breaks the cedars of Lebanon. It divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The voice of the Lord is the most powerful. It stands at ten. The Lord sits upon the floor. God is sovereign. He rules and he reigns. The Lord is enthroned on the floor and he's enthroned as king forever. He already knows what the end is going to be. Uh -huh. He is in the midst of the storm. Uh -huh. And when I was studying, I read a quite a bit about storms. Mm -hmm. Storms are natural disturbances. Uh -huh. Even though they are natural, storms were really dreaded in biblical times. They were dreading, especially on the lakes. Even experienced travelers, such as Paul, did not welcome the winter storms that occurred on the Mediterranean. The Easterners feared the windstorm. These people thought of God as the one who divided, provided them and calm and safety from all of the storms that could come upon them. The dictionary defines a storm as a disturbance of a natural condition of the atmosphere. The disturbance can be violent. When it is violent, it manifests itself by winds of unusual force or direction. The disturbance is often accompanied by rain. Many times there's a heavy downpour of rain that can cause flooding in addition to wind and rain. A storm can also bring snow and hail. Also, the disturbance can manifest itself by thunder and lightning. The thunder can be very loud along with very bright flashes of lightning. In the future, Whenever you hear the sound of thunder, think of the voice of the Lord that is found in stanza 3 and 4 of Psalms 29. In addition to thunder and lightning, it can even bring flying sand and dust. As we know, the weatherman can tell us what to expect from each storm. Nevertheless, he know we know that he does not always get the prediction right. We have learned that storms can be more severe than predicted or can be milder. The truth is only God knows exactly what the end of the vision storm will bring. That's right. And please know that for the glory of God is in the storm. He's right there in the midst of oh, it. Just like he sits over the flood, he also sits with us. After all, he is he, it is he who gives us strength yeah, whenever the trial yeah, and amen. the tribulation comes uh -huh. in our lives. Church, it is he who gives us the courage at the beginning of the crisis that develop in our lives. Amen. And while we are in the midst of such a severe thunderstorm, it is he who gives us the willingness to do whatever it is that we are faced with. Uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, once the disturbance is over, it is the Lord who gives us the courage yeah. and strength we yeah, yeah. to look upon the rubble. Only the Lord can help us face the devastation uh -huh. that is caused by a storm, whether it is severe or mild. Mm -hmm. It is he who gives us peace 
and comfort after a child has been shot down in the streets of yes. America. Yes. No, more, no matter what the trouble might be, we can find some comfort in knowing that the Lord is on our side. Yes. There is some comfort in knowing that he fights our battle yes. for us and he shows us how to fight. Mm. In this psalm, the psalmist is careful to recognize Yahweh alone Amen. as the true God. Yeah. This means Yahweh must always be acknowledged as the divine king. Yeah. Thus, as his creatures, we should ascribe to the Lord every day. As born again believers, it is vital that we do our best to do the following. Glorify, praise, worship, honor, and obey. Amen. Let me repeat those. It is vital that we glorify the Lord. Yes. Praise his name. Yes. Worship him as our king. Yes. Honor and obey him yes. every day. Uh -huh. every day. In our lesson, we are reminded to give him everything that he alone deserves. Mm -hmm. He is Lord of Lords. He's King of yeah, Kings. He's yeah, yeah. Alpha yeah, yeah. and he's yeah, yeah. Omega. Yes, he he's is. the beginning and he's the uh, end. Hallelujah. He's the bread of life and he is the rose of shine. Yeah. This means that we worship him because he is indeed a good king. Yeah. Amen. And along with that, he has a good reputation. And therefore, he deserves our respect every day. Amen. As born again believers, we choose to glorify Almighty God from Sunday to Sunday. Uh -huh. Because he is Lord, because he's master, mm -hmm. and because he's God all by himself. Amen. It is yeah. important that he, we worship him and honor him every day. Yeah. And even though we serve a heavenly king who cannot be seen nor touched, it is important that we glorify and obey him every day. Yeah. Now after this lesson, I would do my very best to hold on to what I've learned in Psalms 29. I believe this song is there to keep me focused. I believe it is there to remind me of the voice of the Lord over the waters. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is there to speak to the troubled waters that affect all of us today. He has already given us the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. who is our comforter. Uh -huh. He has already given us the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Uh -huh. And it shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Because we are in relationship with Jesus, we have everything we need to endure whatever the storms of life brings. We have learned all about Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who is the comforter. Mm -hmm. We know that he's there whether it feels like it or not. Uh -huh. We know that he's in the storm. Yeah. He's in every trial and the tribulation yeah. that we are going through. Yeah. We know that we can depend upon him yeah. because he's a trustworthy king. Yeah. He doesn't say one thing today and change it tomorrow. Yeah. His word is true yesterday, yeah. today, and forever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It is by faith that we know God hears our prayer. Mm -hmm. Thus we run to him or shelter. Yeah. He's our shelter. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. our anchor. Yeah. He's our shield. When we run before the storm comes, yeah. we run during the storm yeah. and we run after the storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we run to him? We run to him whenever we glorify him as king of kings. Yeah. We run to him whenever we praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Whenever we worship him as king of kings. Uh -huh. yeah. We run to him whenever we honor and obey yeah. him over the waters. Yeah. 
because he is our shelter. He is our shield. He is our anchor. And he will take care of us. No matter what we're going through, no matter what storm life brings our way, we can know that he's in the midst of every storm that we encounter. My brothers and sisters, I pray that the peace of God stays with you no matter what the day brings. I pray that we hold on to the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice will be determined that they will be able to persevere in each storm. Rising sun will continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I pray in the name of Jesus that all of you will remember that we can do all things through Christ. I pray that we will hold on and never give up. I pray that you will continue to be that determined church that you will not give up and you will not compromise your belief that you will hold on to his unchanging hand. I pray this prayer to Almighty God, the yeah. one who hung on the cross, who died for us and then he got up on the third day. And now he sits at the right hand of the yeah, Father yeah, yeah, yeah. and he made intercessions for us each and every day yeah. and he declared us not guilty. Uh -huh. He's our shelter, yeah. he's our keeper, yeah. yeah. our shield. And whenever the storm comes, uh -huh. and whenever you're in a storm, yeah. run to him, yeah. obey him, yeah. honor, praise, and glorify his name. Yeah. Any storm, any crisis that may come your way. Yes. And God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but if I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. I would come running. Yes. I would come running to him because I know he would be a shelter for me in the storm. Amen. I would run, come running because he would be an anchor for me. That he would guide me and he would take care of me. No matter what situation that I might encounter in life or whatever storm might come my way. And I read that there's two storms headed this way to the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Marco and Laura headed this way. Yeah. But we can be assured that God will take care of us yeah. because he's in the midst of every storm yes, that we can encounter in life. Yeah. Is there one who does not know the Lord Jesus? Yeah. You can come now and give your life to Christ. As the worship team sing, you can come now and give your life to the one who's in the midst of everything you do.
you can. Jesus sent a power into this life to be in the fall to, to always pray in my dream. I don't know. If you have any storms going in your life, you can come to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, the everlasting Father, the great shepherd of the sheep, we come just to say thank you. Thank you. We come to say thank you for your goodness and the multitudes of your mercy. We come to cast all of our cares upon you because you said that you care for us. So we thank you now, Lord God, that you told us that you will be in the midst of any storm that we might encounter. No matter how great or severe the storm might be raging in our lives, God, you're there in the midst. You sit upon the waters, God. And you will take care of us as long as you just be determined that we will worship you, honor you, and obey you. Now, Lord God, some of us are coming because to the altar because we have sickness in our bodies, God. And we pray, God, that you will heal us, God. You said by your stripes that we'll heal, God. We thank you, Lord God, for your healing nurture now, God. Some of us might need a job, God, and we know that the count of a thousand heals belongs to the Lord, God. We thank you. For your provisions, God. We thank you because you are the job of the city, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because you're such a good God and you care about your kids, children, God. We thank you, God, Lord God, for moving in our lives, for looking over our children, for blessing our children, our grandchildren, and God, for giving them an unexpected end, giving them a little hope, God. Thank you now, Lord, for what you're doing in us, of course, how you're molding and shaping us, and forming us, and vessels of honor. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and multitudes of your mercy. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for the blood. Now we pray these prayers in the mighty, the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And our soul say, Amen. 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 Amen.